All right, folks, we're back. We're back. Back with Mitch. We're going to look at the finals of the Raccoon Cup 56. I think it was 56. 56. That doesn't say anyway. One of the Raccoon Cups. Raccoon Cup is probably the most, what, it's, it, well, it's like a weekly tournament of War Chest on Board Game Arena. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the, the only one, really, that's been run all the time. There was a, another French tournament that happened once, but this is, like, consistent. So you can see the winners of this, and they're often the same ones, and there's a lot of top players playing every single week. This is the finals uh, of this one, and we're going to review the game. We both have not seen this game. Neither of us have seen it. So we're going to both just talk about this game and the moves, we're looking at at it from um, Ep- Epsilon's perspective. I thought we were doing it, Tara. Uh, yeah, we wanted to not do Epsilon's perspective, but we wanted to do Tara's perspective. Uh, Epsil- Wait, no, Tara won. No. no, Epsilon was correct. Oh. Yeah, because Tara got six points. Oh, wow. All right, we want to look at it from the loser's perspective uh, to see if, you know, maybe we can identify the, the moves that, you know, he lost on or she... Um, so yeah, let's do that. Uh, so here's the the draft. Uh, the tournament is played with uh, the nobility um, expansion. I wonder if they're ever going to change that to like siege as well. I hope they don't. You don't like siege? <laughs> not as much. Not nearly as much. I think nobility is the the purest version. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Well, it says you must eliminate a unit first. So it looks like epsilon's going uh, banning first. So let's um I think we did this last time too, but let's talk about what's your strategy looking at looking at a draft. Like what are you thinking to do? Yeah, so I mean you try to play out the entire draft before you eliminate or pick or anything like that. Um when you're eliminating first, that means you're gonna have first pick. If there's a way you can get one of the, you know, top tier units, then you would love to do that, but um a lot of times it's just gonna get banned. So if I'm looking at this draft right now, we have enlist reinforce and spy there's not really a a huge value to anything like outside of i'd say i mean light cavalry and merc would be my two top units mercenary with enlist is very very powerful Mm -hmm. can be tempo or can be late game and obviously light cavalry can just uh, take over a game right away yeah let's so you know the reason being enlist lets you recruit twice and recruiting mercenary lets you take an action with it so if you enlist two mercenary chips that lets you get a lot of value for that enlist because your mercenary gets to move twice immediately um, and that makes it a very powerful tactic it's a one-time effect but it's very strong the synergy here with earl not very strong um you can let's say i mean earl lets you hit a a decree a couple of times but you really don't want to enlist that much because recruiting is not very good spying is fine but often is a miss or doesn't work out very well because they only have one ship in hand Reinforce is fine, but it just takes a long time. Usually comes to get a lot of value out of it. So Earl's secondary ability of of getting free decrees here is pretty weak. Usually Earl very top pick and still Mm -hmm. is because his ability to get off the point is valuable, but he's less valuable here than usual. Uh, Mercenary is also very strong. And I did want to say, you know, Mitch kind of mentioned it, but if you're first ban, that means you're first pick. And what that means is like often you want to ban the strongest unit. But in this case, you're first picking. So you want to ban not necessarily the strongest unit and force your opponent to ban the strongest unit. Otherwise, you'll get it. So if I ban the second strongest unit here, like like Cavalry, for example, and then my opponent, now he really has to ban Mercenary or else I'll get Mercenary. I mean, that's a, that's a thinking that I think is not intuitive necessarily. Yeah. But makes sense. So, so, so okay, sorry. So what were you banning here? Well... So, again, I like to separate the draft into kind of tiers. I would put Mercenary and Light Cavalry in the top tier. Usually there's a couple of tiers that you know, consecutively go lower. Um, I don't think there's a, there's a game-changing unit after that. I would, I would probably say Pikeman might be the next valuable. I like to play with Bishop a lot. So Pikeman and Bishop would be my two favorites, but... I wouldn't hate my opponent having either of those, and I wouldn't feel like I'm going to win the game if I had either of those. So it kind of gets into a, a, a gameplay style. Whatever you like to play best is going to be kind of where you're going to ban. I would try I would try to see if, for some reason, we could get Light Cavalry or Merc. Um, so maybe I think I would just ban one of the units I didn't want to play with. I think I would either ban Pikeman or Earl. 
you've been pikeman or earl to guarantee yourself so like cavalry or mercenary yeah so and you know he could obviously ban a, a useless unit then and make sure he gets one of them. But if I have light cavalry against mercenary, I, I feel pretty good, especially because there's no scout to help him rush it down. Earl doesn't have like a redeploy um, decree to help him. There's no, you know, herald. So most of them are slow units except for bishops a little bit faster. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, actually just saying that maybe then maybe ban bishop. That way, if he leaves mercenary open, we get light cavalry. He can't take mercenary bishop because that is a very very strong combo. Yeah, I was just going to wait for you to, to pause to say that the synergy between mercenary and bishop is very good because bishop recruits while acting, and they can and it can recruit a mercenary chip to do two actions at once. That actually is a combo you'd like to separate. Yeah, Not yeah. So I think my I think I would be banning bishop. Banning bishop. But but bans are such an individual idea. I mean, everybody is trying to get a different unit that they they like. You know. Um, I'm very interested to see what he's going to ban because it's always different to see uh, what what their choice is. I think I would ban like cavalry myself. Really? Yeah, and then I'd force him to especially ban after what just happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then I'd force him to ban mercenary, and then I would be happy to take Earl here. I feel like if you would get Earl and he takes Pikeman Bishop, I feel like that's a win for him on yes, that man. round of the draft. And what do you, what would you pick up then? Knight and I don't know. What would you even want? Knight Marshall, Knight Footman, you know, like Knight Ensign. Yeah, I mean Bishop versus Knight is a, a bishop favored matchup. hmm Yeah, maybe you're right. Let's see what happens. Earl gets banned. Okay. Interesting. That's not what either of us said. No. So Epsilon bans Earl. But it's kind of what you said. So now he guarantees himself one of the good units. He just yeah. didn't ban Bishop. He banned Earl. Maybe yeah. he values Earl better. Uh, now Terra has to ban. And now Terra, uh, he's second pick. I mean, he has to ban either Mercenary or Bishop. If I were Terra, I would ban Pikeman right here. Well, but then doesn't... Well, no, because then Epsilon could take Mercenary and you could take Bishop. I'd be fine playing against Light Cavalry with Mercenary Bishop, <laughs> and I'd be fine playing against mercenary with like cavalry bishop either way i'd be happy with that and then there's with banning pikeman there's nothing else that i really fear in the draft sometimes you know a knight can be a really good play but uh Mm -hmm. yeah i'd be happy i wouldn't i would ban pikeman and then guarantee that i get two out of the three units that are probably going to affect the draft most like cavalry mercenary and bishop yep and it's like i said i think like cavalry is what the first picker here wants but going against Mercenary Bishop is really tough. But, it, you know, again, that's a play style. Let's see what happens. Hmm. Terra bans Pikeman. All right, so now Epsilon's got first pick. I, I think I think Mercenary is first pick here. I, I feel like he has you gotta, to, It's in list. It's so tough here. This is the thing. I, I mean, you, you might be able to see why he's already getting into, tru- into some trouble. You know, I we disagree amongst our friends. How important? I mean, obviously, drafting is always important. I sometimes feel like I've already lost after a draft, uh, and maybe that's just defeatist attitude. But if I were, I, I don't know how to say his name correctly. It's called Terra or S- Epsilon. S Epsilon. Epsilon. Okay. It's Epsilon. If I were Epsilon right here, I would be I would be disappointed right now because I don't want to play Light Cavalry against Merc Bishop, and I don't want to play Merc against Light Cavalry Bishop. So I already feel like I'm behind. I think he has to take Light Cavalry. I think he does. And just give Mercenary Bishop, enlist Mercenary and Bishop, I, the most insane synergies. I mean, that's crazy. He has to block. But there's there's also no answer for late game Light Cavalry here, or mid game Light Cavalry. So like, I don't think he's going to be able to rush him down. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, it's it's a really bad situation to be in, in my opinion. Okay. Epsilon. Um... <laughs> Takes knight. Well, hmm. So I mean, okay. I mean, like now I'm taking mercenary like cavalry, for sure. The two best units. Yeah. And just, um, and just. I mean, then he gets knight and bishop. I know that's a combo, but like that combo still is like it. This it's, seems a, like it's a, a frustrating combo, but it's not a game winning combo. This seems like a very bad pick to me. Yeah. I mean, just not taking enlist mercenary when you and, can. You know and. It, I hate knowing that he lost because in some ways I, I love seeing players play unorthodox and especially with units that I don't value as highly as some other people. Um, so maybe we'll get to see some really 
game changing night play, but I think that was a total blunder. All right, so we got two picks from Epsilon. I mean, not Epsilon, Terra now. I'm, I would say Light Cavalry, Mercenary, and Me don't too. even worry about the whole Knight Bishop thing. Mercenary. Light Cavalry. Yeah. Okay, so now it's Bishop, and I mean, maybe Marshall now, because you got Bishop and Knight, they're kind of these stout boys, and then Marshall can back uh, them up. Maybe Net Ensign. Well, it's not Footman or Archer, right? It's Ensign or. I would probably take Ensign. I don't. I don't think there's going to be much front to front combat. I think he's that's going to be avoided at all times. So. You got it. Um, and then uh, Archer last pick. All right, so now we're in the game. <laughs> Just... <clears throat> so let's take a look at what's going on here. This is something that this is something that I struggle with. I think I would say that. Well, I guess in the, I don't. I don't say that. Everybody says it, but the, the, there's an opening phase of the game, and that's the your first three hands, your yeah. first bag cycle. Mm-hmm. That's the opening. Then you go into the mid game when you start seeing your recruits, and then you go into the late game where you start seeing a lot of deaths. Yeah. The my biggest issues I think in my game are in this opening phase. Okay. I'm always getting jammed. I'm always picking wrong. I'm always forking my units incorrectly. I'm deploying the wrong combos on the wrong sides. Yeah, now we'll talk about when you get jammed, just so they know what we're referring to. So, yeah, I'm referring to getting jammed. I mean, this is a good hand because I get to play Ensign and get them off the point, right? That's You want to get your units out. Where's my, where's my writing? You want to p- place a unit and move it. But let's say this was an archer instead. Okay? Or a coin. Or, yeah. yeah. Then I would maybe deploy Bishop here. I would deploy Ensign here, hoping to have a good time. <laughs> and then, the, and then the next hand, I would draw archer, bishop, bishop, or archer, knight, knight, and have no ability to move these units yeah. off or deploy any units. So then I have to just waste an entire round recruiting or passing. So that I call that cancer hand. We call that cancer hand. It's probably insensitive. We should. Yeah, yeah, I mean, <laughs> we've got to get a new name for it. Um, the, the yeah, whatever. We'll, we'll get a new name. But then this is what we call it. So how do you? And they, you know, how do you fight against it? Well, what you do then is you deploy only one unit and then recruit twice or, or pass recruit or whatever and leave mm-hmm. that open for the next one to make sure that you're clear. And you can still get screwed that way too. Mm-hmm. Um, but, it, you know, you, at least you won't get completely destroyed. Um, or you take the risk. You take yeah. the risk that you just don't get it. And in some cases, you have to take the risk. Like in this case, very fast person, like Calvary and, and, and Mercenary. Yeah, you can't afford to be slowed down. So you, you want to do it. Anyway, this case, this isn't the problem here because he can deploy Ensign mm-hmm. and move him. So he's good to go. But deciding if I want to take that gamble or not is something I, I feel like I often pick wrong on. And then deciding how to locate my units. That's, yeah, that's an undervalued, underthought topic Yeah, as to where you're putting units. When I, I feel like every time you're in a draft, not only should you be thinking about you know, the exact lineup you're trying to do and what that lineup strengths are. You know, if you're drafting a lineup that you think is going to win early on by <clears throat> rushing down, if you're drafting a uh, you know, more... Uh, a long-term strategy or you know one that's going to wear the opponent down um a tricky one you know like there's there's styles of the game that you can actually try to draft for but once you get in the game you have to visualize how that's going to happen and make it happen you can't just take whatever units you get and be like okay i'm gonna i mean just force this into something you know you obviously have to play the chips that you're dealt but if you lose your vision in how you're playing the game, it doesn't even matter what you drafted sometimes because they're just in the wrong places and not able to do what they want. So what are you thinking here? I still have no idea what he plans to do with Knight that's going to win this game for him. So I don't even, I couldn't even begin to think what, I don't know where he wants Knight. So normally if I were playing Knight, I think Knight is a, is a great, yeah, right side unit to shore up the near point. You know, it, it, it's uh one that can defend well because you need to be bolstered to attack it. That would be my um, idea when I'm looking at this hand. Mm-hmm. Um, Bishop try to you know take over the left a little bit, but mm-hmm. I don't. I think he's going to be putting knight on the left and trying to make it really mobile. Mm. So I was just I was just putting in. So I really like Ensign here. Yeah, because Ensign then can, can reach. Affect both. He can pull this forward. Yep. He can do anything here. Yeah. You know, he can move all stuff around. He can even pull this over this way if he needs to. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of action here. And he, I agree with you. And he can do that now. So he can do, go Ensign here and then move Ensign up right here. And that's great. Um, there is having Bishop and Knight in the same combo creates a lot of awkwardness for your opponent. Because yeah. do you bolster or not? Um, so that's something you want to do. It's not going to work out here, I don't <laughs> think, because of this uh, Ensign move. 
I also just feel like, as he mentioned, it can be a very difficult uh, problem to deal with when they're on the same side of the board and you're trying to match units to fight each one. But when you're playing against an opponent that has mercenary and light cavalry, I don't. I think he has to be just focused on surviving <laughs> the early to mid game and making sure that he doesn't win to a quick rush. And he's, you know, I, to try to make sure you get knight and bishop on the same side is going to be make that really really hard. So I'm thinking it's you know it's uh, ensign here and then deploying bishop here. That's what I think is the play here. Yeah, I think bishop could go either side, but I agree. I think the ensign should deploy there and move to where you said. I yeah. agree with that. You're saying bishop can go here too. Yeah. It dep- maybe we'll see what the opponent does and we'll react to that. Yeah, so let's let's see. So we're doing that. An opponent does what? Mercenary. So mercenary, uh, I, I would say bishop is better here than knight. Because it's really easy to bolster the mercenary and be chill. Yeah, but it's again, these are the problems that he's facing. So that's true. But also, if he were to push bishop out to one of these squares um you know thinking he's going to start protecting this point with enlist he can just march right down and kill him immediately that's true and knight couldn't be killed in the first round that way but it's just you're already thinking about these issues where how do i even defend against this Mm -hmm. because if he extends bishop one space into it he's already risking losing him so it's (laughs) it's just a really tough choice he's gonna have a lot Okay. I mean, it's it's okay. It's fine. It's fine doing that. Yeah, because he could take this point. He could still maneuver yeah. this unit. Yeah. I mean, I think I wouldn't do that. I would go here, but especially, I mean, I would be worried about the, just the the mercenary rush, right? The mercenary just can can go right up and take this and get on this point yeah. very easily, and then y- you might not be able to reach it without. Yeah, I mean, support, I but. generally I think doing that direct mercenary rush is most useful. When you have a very strong defender to replace after they theoretically kill Merc. Mm-hmm. So if Merc can go down there and take that point, and then they fight back and kill him, and you can put like a Royal Guard, a Pikeman, mm-hmm. or a Knight on there, mm-hmm. that's a really strong strategy. Um, putting any of, you know, a Footman on there, a Marshal on there, I, I don't think he'd want that. So I don't think he's going to do that. But if he does leave something out there with no protection, you know, it, it, it's a huge setback sometimes. So let's just see what happens. This is a t- so he had double mercenary hand, so he just moved up one. That's that's you know pretty pretty normal. Yeah. All right. Which direction is he going here? Okay, he went that way. That's what I agree with that move. I think bishop is better against mercenary. He needs to bolster him first, of course. But all right, the cavalry is deployed. So it's also, I mean, it's it's hard to not. Sorry, it's hard to get screwed when you have mercenary in your first hand, but it's also. Worth noting that that first hand played out perfectly for Terra. <laughs> I mean, both players had good openers. Yeah, um, but when you're placing, when you're facing someone with that fast of a composition, that, that's he's already under pressure again. You know, there's no setbacks. Light cavalry is going to be able to get on that top point right away. Merc's already, you know, threatening a couple points. It's going to be so hard to defend against this. So now we're deciding. So obviously, Bishop's going to move um, either here or here. Um, I think up is better. Uh, just because you you can get closer to this point than here, um, and then we have to pick where these are going. So he could go, uh, he could go uh, knight and bishop on the same side. Mm-hmm. He could end up here, and then you could put archer over here. I mean, archer ensign actually not the worst. Yeah, because you can back archer up with yeah. your ensign. Actually, kind of nice. I I, mean, I will say really, so. One thing that defensively weak but archer can do for a minor bluff and again i don't think that that terra is thinking about going all in on that right side with merc right away but if he does move his bishop you know up or to the right and then puts archer behind it he can't just willy-nilly move his merc right up to it to kill it because he could have another archer to shoot him right when he does it you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. yeah right archer yeah archer can defend that point right off right right on his birth yeah which is nice so i i I don't think he'd have to worry about it, but it, it's a good idea to maybe bluff that he, he... I mean, he's not even bluffing at this point. I mean, he actually has an archer, so, like... Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I would put the archer there, I would think. You see, this is, like... This is what I'm talking about. This is the first... This is the second hand, mm-hmm. and there's so much to think about yeah. that I, I... For a, lo- a, a large portion... I mean, I've played this... i played thousands of games of this. Mm-hmm. For a large portion of my career, I really didn't care. I was like... <laughs> 
just deploy all of them, right? I was like, yeah. deploy all four of your units, yeah. and that's how you do it. Yeah. And then as I've been playing, you know, maybe my 1700th game, I, I'm like, okay, it actually does matter. Yeah. Not only which two you put where, or three one, mm-hmm. but also how you split them up. Yeah. You know, you really need to develop a plan early of like, how are you taking your points? You know, who's going where? Are you, you know, going like this? Who's taking what point? Like, you really got to know what you're doing. Yeah. So, okay, let's see what, let's see what Terror does. Okay, so Knight's going over there. So he's going to toughen up, and he is going the Archer defense. Yeah, I think that's best. This, this seems very fine. Terra is marshalling. It's good, good marshal. You can easily bolster so, the Merc. Yeah. I, I, I'm expecting here, when you're moving this Bishop, to recruit a Knight because he drafted Knight so highly. Um, oh right, yeah. Because when he moves the bishop, he's gonna he's recruit. gonna recruit something. Um, but now that he's already two to one on that side, it, you know, it looks like if I were if I were Terra and I'm placing a footman over there after LC moves, I'm bo- I'm bolstering that footman off right away. You know. Yep. So I, does he need to have the super active knight over there? I mean, especially with the the ensign, will help him defend a little bit. But I don't know. It's gonna be. It's just it doesn't defend against light cavalry. Yeah, you know. So well, I, I, I'm going to go the other way. I think that he should be getting a bishop with this because he wants to. He, he's going to have to bolster the bishop, so he he'll is. need the extra bishop coin. Might as well get it now um, to get that bolster off as soon as possible. Yeah, I think you know you're going to park these on these spots, and they're going to you know light cavalry is going to take this obviously, but you're going to be parked here. It's not that you know risky really at this point to like get to chase him down. No, not yet. It's just you know. Like Calvary has so much reach that it's it unless you can actively pressure it without walking off one of your points, it's so it's so hard to do anything. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure we'll yeah we'll see. Okay, recruiting the bishop. bishop. All right, and moving up. Okay, so you see he's following my mind here. Mm-hmm. All right, and now we're gonna. Okay, so this might just be for the bolster off and footman back there. He might have coin in hand, I guess too. I mean, I I would think the only reason he moved that marshal is if he absolutely has footman right now otherwise i would have bolstered it off yeah he probably does have footman and archer gets deployed where we expect and let's see a footman come out there yeah. he is okay so footman's going to be de- bolstered off nobody cares yeah. footman best at being bolstered off yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right here's an, our, our final this one just kind of plays out easy i think it just knight moves straight up archer archer's kind of awkward I mean, I think I think here. Do you bolster Archer off right away, or? I don't. I mean, not. I don't think you do it right away. You got to. You got to at least wait for him to. To do one movement before you would do that, I think, just to just to bluff the Archer defense. Are we doing two recruits here? So, I mean, you know, he has he has the enlist. Um, three recruits with Bishop already. It's like you probably never enlist. Yeah, I mean, I, honestly, some games like this where you don't <laughs> need a ton of units early. Um, I like to keep the enlist for when I try to pivot later if sure. I'm going to make it to mid game. Yeah, right. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I guess he he probably wants to get at least one knight, and I don't think it'll hurt him to get a knight and a bishop. So I I might I would probably see a knight bishop enlist, but then I think he has to bolster off archer for sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I guess I would start with a knight movement up. I think I only you know, and then see what he does. Pass to. All right, Archer starts with that. Bolstered off. Hmm. That's an interesting signal, I guess. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> and again, I don't, maybe he does this. This will be interesting. Yeah. So right now, he could. I know what you're thinking already. Uh, yeah, he, he could, could enlist. Enlist here. And, and then, then attack. And then attack. Whether he has the chip in, well, he doesn't chip in hand, but he, can, he has three, right? So yeah. it's right now coin, enlist, and then hit. And now he's got a bolstered he, off Archer. Completely dead side. Yep, he has a free, he for sure has the enlist. He has the coin. He, he should have kept that archer off. And exactly, that's what I was saying. You need you need to keep that archer to still bluff that at least one more round because if he does one more action, he would be okay probably. Um, most likely, you want to keep it to the end. Yeah, two would secure. It. Two would secure it. But the other huge thing, and I'm I'm actually starting to think he might do it here because it's so devastating. He already recruited a bishop. It's all over. right. Yeah, it's over. And so he's going to move his knight, obviously, but then he, he's going to have to place his bishop on the other side. He's going to have to. And yeah. then there's this ugly ensign knight blocking the bishop for even going straight towards anything. Mm-hmm. 
it, I mean, that's just so disgusting. So actually, if I were if I were Terra, I would do this now. Yeah, I, 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 would, I wasn't thinking he was going to do it before, but I would. He's, at this point, it's not a gambit. He walked it's, into it's, it. It's straight up the best move. Yeah, he walked into it. It wins the game, I think. What did I just do? He's, you hit end game and turn instead of progressing, I think. Oh okay. No, he didn't do it. Well, he still can. Sure. Okay. It's probably best to tip that hand as late as possible. Yeah, okay. He still has coin, and then he still has whatever. So he's coin here. Oh, he could spy. He could spy knock the coin out of his hand. And then it would have been an argument for doing it. I Well, I think if he was going to do that, he would have done it first. Yeah, well, for sure. Maybe he just saw it now. I don't know. Let's see. That yeah. is a defense. Okay. No, he just recruits knight. Does he? Just regular recruit. Regular recruit. Okay. And again, I expect to see it. Just footman. He doesn't do it. Okay. Interesting. As it gets, I would say. Okay, now we're going to move Knight up, I guess, right? I'm shocked. I really think that would have been a blowout. And now what's he do with this coin? Um, I mean, I would probably just regular enlist. Yeah, I was going to say LC. Big miss. It's a big miss. That would have been absolutely... But I also wonder, I mean, like... You come here. I agree with you. I think that would have been a completely devastating play. This is dead. You're <clears throat> you're on a point. He's one away. You got an active guy here, and then he can just. This is dead, and then he just backs up and takes it. The game's over. He can't do anything. To stop well, this. I mean, it, that's not exactly true. I suppose. What can he do? I mean, so if he. You know, it, it would have been really hard. I guess, like, had he moved... Had he done the enlist first, he could have recruited an archer. Or two archers in the next two plays. He's better. Um, if, you know, if he just moved one up first, and then did the enlist, I don't know if you recruit an archer, but you probably understand what's going on. So, I mean, he it, it wouldn't have been, like, for sure. But, yeah, I, I would have done it, I think. I, I, think I mean, that, if you... Like, yeah, sure. If he recruits archers, then instead of falling back, you just go forward. Yeah, and, and, the and archers honestly, you, you, he always wants people to recruit archers. <laughs> I mean, it's it, that would have been bad. He's still in a, he's still in an incredibly strong situation. Sure, but like usually that kind of enlisting is a is a is a gambit. Yeah. In this case, no. it would have been game winning. Yeah. I think it would have, that was a huge miss for from him to do that. But he's still doing fine as far as like winning the game. Yeah. Maybe he just thought that he he's confident he's going to win the game in a traditional <clears throat> way. And could he have not seen it? He's could too good. He, of a could player. he have not seen it? He's too good. Of a he just decided not to do that. I don't know. It, that's too good of a player. I would say. Some people don't like to 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 make the you know like I said I don't even think it was a risk either but some people just think that's that's sure. very risky okay you know because then you have a you have a full bag of mercs maybe maybe like cavalry will get <laughs> pressured too quickly by knight if he did that you know I mean like there's risks all right <clears throat> here we are this is interesting moves here so I think on a high level on a high level it's it's bolster bishop here and. Knight, I don't know what to do with knight. Move knight up and force the. Well, not with them on a backup. You for you force the bolster here. You have another knight well, ship coming. Yeah, but I mean, if he happens to have two LCs, you, you just get blown out. Well, yeah, but depending order, right? So you bolster first. You pass with coin. See what he does with. Yeah, I mean, I, I like. I would probably start with the bolster of bishop. That'd be my thing, and then see what he does. I would start with. Either recruiting or passing with coin. But yeah, bolster bishop is fine too. And I say that because I want to see what he does first right? exactly. before I make any. Like mm -hmm. if I bolster a bishop, he knows I'm I'm all done. Well, I'm not all done with bishop, but. We're not all done. He's still no, an active he's still one. An, he has still yeah. a bishop left. I guess, yeah, bolster bishop's fine. I think that tells the least. We like the bolster. All right, Terra does. Oh, bolster first, so now you can't go with that knight. Now he wouldn't do it. Yeah, I mean, Knight's already in trouble. So in this situation, with Terra being able to take initiative, you, you know, you you basically have to already bolster Knight. Yep, bolster Knight's a good play. I mean, you don't have to do it right now, I'm saying, but you have to you have to commit to bolstering Knight now or it's just, the matchup we, isn't there. You think we do anything with coin here? Um, I think since you have another Knight coming, I think you, you bolster first and then and about, then you read more information. How about this? Listen to this. I'm ready. Spy with coin. No, because he's got two. He's got two. A two bag. Yeah. 
But you could spy with coin, knock the LC out of his hand, or no, he doesn't have it. But that's not good. I mean, uh, I, that's actually bad. I don't like that at all. Undo. It's, I, it, it's important to think about it. Like, could I spy here? Oh, and I mean, what would yeah. it gain me? And in this case, not that much. That's one thing I really wanted to try to be better at communicating as we start doing these videos is there is so much to think about and consider every time. And just because we're not bringing something up doesn't mean either it was a bad idea. We may have just missed it. Maybe we didn't think about it. Um, and there's a lot of things that might have been like marginal ideas that we don't talk about because we think there are clearly better ideas. Mm -hmm. But there are so many things that you should be considering every single round. All your options. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, you know, I'll, I'll be playing a game and I'll feel like I should do something and I'm ready to do it. And I sit there and think for a while and then I realize I'm a complete fucking idiot. And I <laughs> and there was a, an obvious thing I should be doing or a much better thing I should be doing. So, you know, you should be taking your time to really consider things. And yeah, I mean, I wasn't thinking about spying. I don't think it adds much value right now at all, but mm -hmm. definitely start thinking about those things. Yeah. And order matters a lot too. Mm -hmm. What order you do things in matters a ton. Yeah. All right, so we are doing Royal Coin, looks like. Recruit Knight. Okay, yeah, you bolster Knight, Recruit Knight, that's fine. Yeah. And also, we we have a Knight fetish. He, he definitely does. First pick yeah. Knight, so. I cannot believe it still. I forgot that happened. Okay, LC going real deep here. Strong LC. Probably use the coin to recruit there. Now we are bolstering with Knight. I anticipate. You have to. Get nice and solid foundation here. All right, so where are we at here? Terra is running a... I also love the point. We talked about this before. It's such, oh, it's such a small difference. And it's not something you should necessarily like try to plan around. You know, you make your best moves. But <clears throat> when you're looking at their bag sizes, having that five bag is so much better than a six bag. Because you know the exact contents of a six bag after the first hand is played. I mean, obviously, you know, they're hidden coins. You may not know the exact. But you know exactly what bag he's playing with with those six coins the moment you get the redraw on the second hand of the five bag it's roll the dice he has no the opponent has no idea so i i, I just love having a five bag as opposed to a six bag not saying you should change your game plan for it but it's a huge advantage yeah i mean you should you should change your game plan for it having a well it, it, i was thinking about this i mean a five bag is the this that's the smallest bag you can have well, you can have a four bag as well, which is the same thing. Yeah. But like the, an odd number, of, you don't want a divisible by three. You don't want a power of three bag. No. Because then you always have like, you leave three in your well, bag. They I mean, know what those three are. Unless you're like, I mean, a perfect small bag is totally fine. But like, you know. Well, yeah, literally three is fine. Yeah. Because then, but you yeah, don't, I mean. What you don't want is six. Six is just. Yeah, six bad. is a really bad one. And then more than five six is, is too big. Yeah, five is so much better than six. Yeah, five is a ton better than six because you reshuffle every, re every redraw. All possible all possibilities yep. exist for your opponent. And we, yeah, we'll talk about that when it happens in a second, so yeah. you can see it a little better. So, so, so Terry's about to redraw here. So he's bolstered off his marshal. Now we, you know, what what's known? I mean, you can see it here. So we have the the, the omnipotence, but or omnis omniscience, I should say. What do we have? What omniscience? Oh, just of looking at their bags and stuff. But um, you know, we, we're going to know what is drawn. For us. But Terra is going to draw an X now, a complete random. It, you know, it's going to be one of the two uh, chips that are discarded. So it's going to be either an LC or the hidden coin, which is probably coin. It is coin, right? Uh, it's <laughs> yeah, coin, it's, yeah, now it is coin. It's probably coin. Unless he did it, unless he did it with a Merc. But. Uh, I wanted to say that there, there is a note feature in the game right here. You can put notes here. And it's if you're playing turn-based, this is a really great thing to do because like, look at Terra's bag right now. Terra has possible a mercenary, a light cavalry, and a coin. We're highly suspecting coin is here because he recruited with it. So his his final two chips are mercenary and light cavalry. I could write that in my note. L C Merc. And hit OK. And now those notes are there. And now when I'm about to hit play, the the way the game represents this is now his bag is redrawn, or he drew, his bag is all shuffled up. And we don't know what's in his bag anymore. Like, if I just came here, it could be anything, because I forgot. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I kept that note. So That's I know smart. for a fact he's got LC and Merc here. Mm -hmm. Even though it's not, like, guaranteed now, uh, that's an important distinction. Yeah. No, it's a small thing that really helps. So you, And you could take those. If you're playing, like, if Mitch over here plays 10 turn-based games at a time, yeah. definitely important for him. Yeah. Um, but even if you're playing one game, it's good to, you know, have that um, in your head. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> We're, we are... Uh, 
or epsilon. Yeah, so I feel like this is a, a classic trap hand for trap. for many players. If you look at it, you're like, hey, I can push up Knight with the Ensign. And yeah, he'll probably attack me. I can hit him back. But then I'll hit him back and he can attack me. And it's like, that is true. That's very true. But considering that the initiative can be taken by Terra, and considering they have for sure one like Alvary, we knew that, possibly redrew the second, they might not even need to <laughs> uh, take the initiative to kill you. And then your knight's just completely dead. Mm -hmm. uh, if they really, really wanted to, they could almost for sure. I think one every turn sure kill your knight. So like, I just feel like you look at this and you're like, hmm. "This is what knight's for." Yeah, here's my juicy bite. Here's my chance. <clears throat> uh, but it also real it makes you realize how helpless <laughs> it, you are when you're trying to go up against someone who's taking initiative and is on the same level of bolster as you. It's just it's just so hard. So what do you think happens here? What's our plan with our with our hand? I feel like you, I mean, not at this point, but I feel like instead of trying to use Anson to move Knight, I feel like you've got to kind of block the point. Yeah, just do this. Uh, I, I, I think, yeah. I mean, I think that's what's going to happen. Just take your three points and chill. I mean, I, I'm happy with this. I think uh, this bolstered bishop's going to be pretty strong against him. And then, you know, these two, I mean, because Cavalry's going to be pretty active, but... He can't really go here in this area because knight can. You got two knight chips, at, you know, in your bag. Yeah, but this is where cavalry, like cavalry, causes such a problem because once, once we're on both our points, mm -hmm. and LC is bolstered, he can just jump and jump, jump, get hit, and jump, and then with an initiative take. Yep. Or not? I mean, you know, if yeah. they have if they have three of them, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, you know, it's like it. That that's why it's so dangerous. So it's not even a full defense for there. Like you're going to have to try to actually do something to the cavalry. But the moment you walk off one of those points, the cavalry can just jump on and take initiative. So, you know, you're going to, honestly, looking at it, he has to try to win the right side. You know, I, I don't, there's no way to really pressure light cavalry with knight. And you can't, you can't leave those points because cavalry can just jump on it. Hmm. So he has to try to win the right side. And I just, I just don't think there's any possible way to run the way. Not with Merc enlist. Win the right side. Yeah. Well, he has to take his own point, but he has to somehow stop Merc from getting both points. Hmm. Yeah, that's going to be an order. And Merc doesn't, with, with enlist, you know, what do you do? You walk up to him, and then he can just enlist you dead. He doesn't even have to bolster. Yeah, I mean, I was, I was wrong, too. I mean, if, if Bishop goes here and Merc just walks up, well, he, you know, you, have, you, 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 well, no, you don't even have chips. If you move here with Bishop and you're out, he can just move up and enlist and yeah, hit, double no, hit it's, Bishop. And it's kill such him. a. This is insane threat here. And this is a run by threat here. Although I think, even though that is seem like an insane threat, no, it is. And you should once again do it because that would win the game. <laughs> they would win this whole side. Yeah, I mean, right, let's see what our boy does. Let's see what Epsilon does about here. Knight moving. Ensign. He's moves. pushing Knight. He does it. He fell for the trap. I'm shocked. He fell for the trap. Well, let's see how the trap plays out. <laughs> Yeah, interesting. Yeah, Absalon, I played him recently, and he... I think I'm 0-3 against him. He devastated me. But he's really... I mean, this... I think. Well, uh, he. I guess the terror, it was a terror that didn't make this play, but he put himself in that position, and now this, I think, is not very good. But let's see what happens. I expect an attack here. Yeah, I mean, so again, we, we for sure know he has one like Calvary. Oh, whoa! This is like 4D chess over here. I mean, that's fine. So, I think from this we can we can discern that he has mercenary coin as his last two chips. <clears throat> if he does, if does he wants to use them, he doesn't want to. No, take initiative? well, if if he had, yeah, he doesn't want to take initiative because it is a huge power swing whenever you take initiative. Yeah, and when you have light cavalry, the threat of the run by, by with taking initiative is just impossible to defend. So I think you know what he has right now. If he had two. Again, you attack with one, you bolster, you kill him with taking initiative. Then it's like, you know, I think, I think he would have done that. Hmm. I didn't consider this move. I would have thought he would just stand there and, and, and kill him, right? But yeah, I mean, this is also fine. It's I mean, just, it's a very, very patient play. Yeah, it's just like Which long, is fine. Again, he's, 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 he's in such a good position. So now you move... Up to the, the, the 
other point or do you i mean yeah you don't move here i almost would here because i feel again i feel like this shows you that he doesn't have two lc right now yeah he didn't at the, at the beginning i you have to try to do something to light cavalry you have to i guess you're right and this also is better because you're within range of it, defense and stuff. it's a, it's a slight risk if he does have the the second light cavalry i guess it's a slight risk but you're always taking that risk mm -hmm. um You could. I was gonna say you could. You could act with your bishop first. Sure. And maybe he puts double pressure on it right now. Yeah, that would be kind of good. Like Calvary can't hit this bishop. He recruits a bishop with it. Straightforward. Straight up. That's pretty cool because now he. Well, it's not that cool because <laughs> then Merc enlist. I mean, if he has coin, which which I'm almost certain he does. So he goes, Merc, move here, and then enlist, double kill the bishop, and then the game. Yeah, I mean, or enlist. You know, it's enlist, kill. I mean, again, it's just there's so many possibilities here. He did it. No, well, he just moved first. Now he can enlist, and it's just so bad. Double pressure LC. Yep, that's good. But now it's And it, it is worth noting that if, if this was his pie-in-the-sky dream of pressuring a single unit with both knight and bishop, this is why it's so difficult. Because if you're like cavalry, it's like, you know, I can't attack the bishop right now. So I kind of want to get hit to fight the bishop. But, you know, I need to be bolstered to fight the knight. So it's like, in yeah, theory, in, yeah. in, all, all Cavalry in wants to do is just, theory. is just leave. Yeah. Cavalry just jumps back here and says, see you guys. So is there is there any way he doesn't enlist right now? I mean, I would be... I don't, I, I don't want to say anything stupid because he's let me down a couple times from these kind of plays. You know, it's but. not even let down. Like I said, play style it varies so differently. And I, and I know both these people are very, very top players. So it's fine if he doesn't. I just feel like he... Yeah, okay. He's enlisting. He's going to mulch up. Bishop, and then the game. I mean, if there was a concede button in a tournament, I'd hit it right now. Mm, yeah, I would absolutely hit the concede button in the tournament right now. He's very badly beaten here. Like attacking here doesn't even do anything. Yeah, I mean, you you <laughs> do just, it, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, just, it's just so it's so bad. His situation is just so bad. He He's going with the attack. Mm -hmm. And then you just walk away. Yeah, it just goes over there. Does he? Is he trying to get an archer now? He's deploying bishop for sure. Saving his little mysterious recruit for another day. I mean, he still has enlist, so he can, you know, mm -hmm. he could really jump into archer or really jump into... Ensign? I, just, I, mean, I mean, jump in at du double ensign here is kind of cool because you can really move stuff around fast. Yeah, but... But you need to move it up real fast. I mean, so, fast. yeah. And obviously, we're looking at this. We're both looking at this and saying this game's over. But, I mean, let's let's do it a little more critically. Mm -hmm. So, let's look at the points that's probably going to end the game here. Obviously, Merc's going to control the one he's on. I'm, yeah, Merc can easily take these two. Well, no. No, I, I, I think for sure, like, Cavalry's taking that one. Because sure. what else can Cavalry get to right now that's easy? Uh, yeah, nothing easy. I mean, he could go with a run-by, but, like... Go under Archer and just start hitting him. He's got a lot of Cavalry chips. yeah. I mean, you could just put him here and then let Merc take that, and then he'd get there. Um, but yeah, I mean, point being, he'll take all of, all of these, and then he'll need to take another one. Yeah, I mean, I, he's got so many options. If again, if he leaves that point with Knight to try to do something, you can do the cavalry run by. Um, I mean, I don't hate getting. I mean, I like, I do like getting double ends in here because that really speeds up the side. His bag is so big then. Yeah. I don't know. It's so it's such a big bag at that point. Reinforce. He reinforces bishop. His bishop. Okay. Well, sure. I mean, that's... so is he? He's probably going to be doing an enlist with double bishop then. Well, he, he can also just bishop into one. I don't know. I mean, he just used coin. I think for he didn't want to enlist. The yeah. reinforce, I think, is whatever. It's, yeah, it's, just... it's it's almost like a pass. Yeah, he it's passed. a pass plus one. He passed plus one. Yeah. I don't think that'll come into play in this game, probably. He he, he only controls his base points, still. Like, yeah, it's sad. Okay, so here we go. I mean, I think... Well, Bishop moves up. Ensign can move up. I think that both uh, both move up and control. I think that's a that's what I would do here. Move up, up, and control. Um... <clears throat> I don't know. I mean, maybe he has to start pressuring the Merc. You mean like this? Without yeah. controlling first? It's again. It's not going to be him controlling points. It's going to win the game. It's going to be him stopping the opponent from controlling points. I do hate getting off the point because it's a threat there. But like, if you're standing next to it, you at least have to force him to take initiative. Well, here's the problem: his Terra's hand is triple Merc right now, so that's not going to be any good. 
as you can see here. Yeah. If we assume that's coin that he passed with, which, which it is. absolutely is. Yeah. So he's got Merc, 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 which you know means he could bolster, take, and, and even you know yeah. move. But we'll see what we'll see what he does here. Crude bishop get, to move bishop. Getting in the bishop game. Sure. I expect a control <laughs> here, a bolster. Sure. Now we're gonna move Ensign up. He's gonna move. Okay. Okay. And now we're going to control with Merc. For sure. Whoa. Mm, okay. Still fine. He's going more in our LC. Yeah. Control's still going to happen. So he's going to control. Think. Yeah. And now what are we going to do with Knight? I mean, I guess he, he doesn't. Yeah. So he could. He could. I mean, I don't know why he would attack Knight, but he could. Knight I'm can't really attack. I'm a little confused, I guess. I would play this differently, and I don't know if it's better or worse. You control first? Or what do you mean? Well, so again, you know, you talk about leaving points and how dangerous it is with having LC. Um, now I'm looking at the game and thinking that the bottom left point is where I would go with Light Calvary. You can sure. first move him next to the archer and there's no threat there. Sure. And then you dump over. Um, and then right there. Which, you know, I understand why he's bolstering off. Mm -hmm. But I, I, don't, would, I don't think I would have gone a triple bolster there. That just seems excessive. Because you still want to be able to, if you're going to do that to bring the the LC over, you're going to need the Merc to get the other right point. Yeah, I mean, you still leave yourself with two mercenary chips active if you want. Yeah. So it's like, he's basically, you have two mercenary chips in your hand whenever you want. So a triple bolster, is, it's, it's fine. You can always activate him. I mean, he's it's like he can't make bad plays at this point. Yeah, I know. Because the position's so overwhelming. Yeah, maybe triple bolster was the right idea. It makes it so hard for him to walk that knight over. What's he going to do He's basically him? walking to death, but... What do you do? He oh, he, took, he controlled, okay. Okay, and then last mercenary so action this, is control. This game is just about over. All right, so Ensign can control. Ensign can move knight. Um, Nowhere, really. He can move knight up, and then knight can move himself up all the way. No. But it's, yeah, he, he needs to take an opponent's point at this point. And, uh, it, well, he has, he has three units that need to be on four points. Right, right. It's just, you can't do it. He just controls with Ensign. That's, sure. That's fair. Huh. He's actually going to fight Archer. Yeah, I mean, I guess if he moved here, he would just, you know. Well, I, you, I would only do that when I'm about to take initiative or, you know, like. Mm -hmm. Like if, 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 you put, if you are going to put LC over to, next to the Archer that's threatening the bottom point and he moves, moves his bishop back or something, like that's still a win and you can still attack Archer, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, yeah, you're right. This is a much better spot to be because you can still hit Archer and also threaten that spot. Yeah, and if the knight walks down to threaten you, you can always just run by. Yeah, this is a better... This would have been... I feel move. like... It's equivalent against this spot, but beneficial against this spot and this spot. Yeah. I mean, I guess then you can, like, these pieces can move to a, to a, to hit you, but yeah, then you can just you move know, around. You're, you're almost at rundown, like, All moment. Right. What's he, is he enlisting now? Oh. Act oh, spy. Okay. I so mean, he's going to just... Slow down LC a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a read. Okay, so he draws coin. Okay. But, like, I mean, I. So he just passes with coin. Yeah, I guess that's. Oh, no, he moved up. What? I'm not sure why he'd move up and not just. Well, that's fine, but then. He just defend this. I, like I feel like he just, in the same round, did two different strategies. And I understand that the second LC was taken out, so, like. But if he's going to move the Merc to top left why wouldn't the cavalry go to the right what's worse tonight going now <laughs> kind of can't go anywhere i mean yeah he, he was never going to be able to go, <laughs> to go I anywhere guess, i guess what do you do you got you gotta you gotta hope to get the bishop on that point because the merc can't fuck with the bishop right now yeah i guess the knight but actually you know what it goes here no you know what i would do goes here what would you do Bolster knight. I think I would bolster knight off. Bolster knight off. Yeah. I mean, but uh, if he wants to take initiative, you're never going to beat him <laughs> to the point. So, again, it's just I don't know. Eh. Eh. That's all right. A joke. A joke made an error to that point. It doesn't seem like it does anything. I mean, wait well, one more move and you start doing you something. Gotta, you got to try to do something. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I mean, bolstering off would be, I think, well. It's just he's been so it, far it behind. It feels like he's been so far behind for so long. What's this? Reinforce? Oh, re oh, re we we, we, didn't, we didn't talk about reinforce Merc. He didn't. He reinforced like Calvary, but reinforce Merc. He he can't. He hasn't yeah, he hasn't chips. lost any. But reinforce and Merc have good synergy yeah. because you get that free move. 
We didn't talk about that during the synergy phase. This is actually a really good um, mercenary. Oh yeah, for enlist sure. and reinforce. I even think about reinforcer. Yeah. Well, that's what made mercenary. You know, I mean, it's always a high pick, but I would say that's why it's on par with LC this game. All right, here we go with the um, double bishop. <laughs> it's like it's like I just hate this so much. By taking knight off the point, you got to bring bishop up first, straight up. I think. Yeah, because you want to go. Defend but then if he, if Merc just goes bottom left, down yeah. one, well, yeah. no, if you so if Merc just goes here. Merc goes here. If Bishop is already one up. Yeah, Bishop goes here. Merc goes here. Now, now Merc threatens <laughs> yeah. both. So it's like, what do you do with your second Bishop? Do you just attack him? You just I mean, attack like attack him for what? You it, for ages. You can't. So I don't know. Again, it's he. Again, he has to do something. His position is so bad. Um, I feel bad for him. But yeah, I mean, that is what there do you do. Is. Yeah. Now we just. I still, I still hate that he brought LC to that spot that it's in. It's just now it's in. Oh, he just went up there. Wait, what? I mean, sure. Yeah, I mean, you can't fine. you can't kill the mercenary in time for anything. So, I mean, once you take that, you know, in theory, you're like you're one point away from winning. But like, in theory, he can get that swap off the knight one at any point he wants, unless the knight moves back. What happened? Here? He's got to be recruiting to go down. Oh, okay. Yep. And now you move toward the LC. I mean, I think you attack. Ugh, I attack? Mean, he's, he's, he's never going gonna... to kill him in time. Well, I know, but he's not going to win the race. Yeah, he's not. Not at all. Well. Oh. That's... Perplexing move, kind of does nothing. I mean, is it just a bait to try to get him to try to slow him down? Is he is he concerned about being too slow? Honestly, I probably would have. I mean, I would have either gone to the other side of Archer to get on the bottom point, or put myself against the wall to get on the top right point. I don't. That doesn't serve anything. Yeah, like you could have gone here yeah. to be one jump to here, or you could have gone here to be one jump to there. Yeah. If you want, I mean, or even just like, I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah, either of those moves are better than it's this. A, it's a very strange move. I there. mean, you're you're blocking the knight from here, but I, he, he could just, just go, go here. There. So it's like, yeah, I and know. I wouldn't want to lose that cavalry right now. Yeah, I think that's just, a really weird play, too. What the hell? I think that's a bad move. Yeah, I agree. Hmm, so he doesn't it. get the knight. You got the terrible draw here. Well, I guess you control. I mean, you have to control. And now mercenary controls, probably. Yeah. I mean, you can wait one turn to do it. Yeah. So we get. And now you. I mean, I would bol recruit Archer. I think you. I think you bolster here. Like, yep. what is what is Bishop's next threat? I think you should bolster Bishop just to make him tougher. I mean. Well, he's. How many bishop active chips does he have? Just one? I mean, like... One. Well, three, I guess. The, the, these two and mm -hmm. then one more. One, yeah, I mean... I guess you could try to <clears> run... <throat> I, don't, I mean... Uh, okay, good. The bolster, I agree with that. The bolster happens. This... this. <sighs> oh, yeah. I mean, I guess that that's fine, except for you risk losing him first for yeah, no reason. Yeah, no sense. Very silly. So he can just take initiative here and win. He just baited. He just baited the thing. Well, it wasn't even a bait. Like, yeah, like hit me, hit me. He, well, he could have just hit him, and then yeah. he wouldn't be able to win. So, yeah, this this is over now. He passed. Take initiative. Just passed. Doesn't need to. Take he doesn't need to. Yeah. Just can do it. Double knight coins. Knight moves toward like cavalry, I suppose. I mean, yeah, it doesn't matter. Doesn't even. Yeah, I guess actually that's that's better. So that's that's the win. He takes it. So you know it. It's hard to to comment on a game after a certain point <laughs> where again he got in such a bad position by getting mulched up with the enlist um, that after that there was no chance. But if you're going to look at it and think the enlist is what won that game, I completely disagree. I think it was his draft. I just the night pick was perplexing. What did what did Knight net him that whole game? What was what was difficult for Terra to do to the Knight or to work around the Knight? Absolutely nothing. 
And there was nothing in the draft that made me think it was going to be a problem. I I mean, Knight's not even... <laughs> I was actually, you know, in pre- like preparation for this channel and talking about things, I was mentally making like a whole tier list, like essay, yeah, yeah. whatever. We and, should do that. And I think Knight was down at like C or D tier. I mean, like yep. it's it's a it's better than the worst units, and it can have some very very functional value at points in the game. But it's not a know, first pick in any world. In any world, very weird. Yeah. And he and not only like maybe if the draft is so bad, but that wasn't. And mercenary and list was there. You know, we didn't even say this during the draft, but first ban Earl, right? Yeah. Next ban Pikeman. Yep. He picks Knight. Yeah. If Knight was going to be his first pick out of Light Cavalry, Mercenary, and Knight, why didn't he ban Light Cavalry or Merc? Why did he ban Earl? Yeah. I, Does he think that Merc and Light Cavalry is better than Earl? Well, on this, on this. I mean, I, I think that. Sorry. Does he think that Earl is better than. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Uh, so he. He knew he was going to leave. He didn't ban like Calvary. He didn't ban Merc. He knew he was going to take Knight if he had the, the option. Mm-hmm. So he left him both of those two, but he didn't want him to have Earl. Yeah, you're right. You're right. So is he thinking that Earl was better than like Calvary and Merc? He, he on this? values Earl better than Mercenary. That's how I have to interpret that. And I there mean, are times that Earl is very strong when it has a march, when it has a redeploy. Yeah, this was a Mercenary favorite draft. Incredibly high. I, yeah, I mean, like I said, those two were, were high S tier. And there was nothing really even middle tier. Yeah. And he gave them both the S tiers and he got destroyed by them both. Yeah, that was a really... Yeah, he did... If you could lose a game in draft... I think that was it. I think that that Epsilon lost this game in draft. And then I also do want to talk about Terra's kind of apprehensiveness of doing of using that, that mercenary aggressively early. That enlist mercenary. I mean, he did the same move eventually, right? Enlist killed a bishop completely and op- yeah. opened that side up. He could have done that in the first bag. He could have, and that would have crushed this game. I mean, again, I think. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. If you were no, I was just. I, say, I think that no. had he done that, you know, after the in the first round when we talked about it, or when he did it then, I think either way that was probably going to be a game winning move. Yeah. Um, and that's something that. Esfalon should have known, looking at the draft, that that's you know a threat of a game game winning move like that. I I do think the reservation earlier may have been that you know if you're redrawing three mercs there and he happened to draw two knights and can walk up and kill your LC, that's that's a bummer. You know that makes it pretty hard over there. So maybe that was just his thought process that like I know I can use this still at any time and I can make a bomb out of it. Um, but yeah, it just. His versatility with enlist with Merc, you know, it's a it's a unit you can bolster off and leave until you need it. You can be so aggressive with it, like you know, we we're trying to get him to be. But the versatility between that and then the movement of the LC, it's just there was not a way that I saw him win that game. And like I said, you got to go into a, a draft and a game having a plan as to this is how I'm going to win. This is how I want to win this game, and maybe it doesn't work out, but this is how I see this going. I don't even see what he saw. You know, it's, I was I was about to say something like, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty, and in the pressure of the tournament, you know, but it is this turn based, and it's a very different vibe. Like yeah. you're not in a live game. Yeah, you, I mean, there is pressure, but it's kind of like you you can study your every move for yeah. as long as you want. Yeah, and you you know, generally, I mean, maybe they play this all live. That's not how I play. I usually yeah. make a, a move and I leave. Mm-hmm. So I I come in pretty fresh in every move, and I look at the board and I reevaluate it. So it's it's interesting to me to think about like. Why are some of these things missed? You know, yeah. is it like pressure? Is it, yeah, yeah? And I, you know, just to make sure no one thinks we're uh, we're biased or anything. I mean, I I have a lot of respect for the the short bet I've been playing against Espelon on this and uh, Epsilon, and I, he was one of the players on the other uh, War Chess site, right? That yep, that had an incredible win rate. I mean, I know he's a very good player, he's a very and, good player, and I would love to hear you know his comments or thoughts on this, and you know, and. Uh, Anybody he wants to comment on the video or Tara wants to, I'd love yeah. to hear thoughts about it because I yeah. both two players I really respect. Um, but it's great when you get to look at a game through other people's eyes and see what they are seeing. And um, in this one, I just I didn't see it. <laughs> I do want to have a talk a, a big talk to Epsilon about why night, why night. Yeah, I mean everything else aside, it's just like that's a weird drafting choice. From, yeah. from the jump. Yeah, somebody who's got thousands of games logged, you got to know that night is way worse than. Most of the other units yeah. in, in that draft. Strange. 
Very strange. But yeah, that was. I wonder. I'm curious now. Like, if we do more of these finals, if we're going to find like weird stuff like this, I, and that's one of the reasons I would love to. And you know, not just to cast it and watch it with you guys, but for me to go back and look at it, because as I said earlier, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of people who play units better than I play units, right, and right. sometimes it's just because I don't like playing it. You know, it's a play style thing. Um, but sometimes people do stuff with a unit, and still, after you know, I've played thousands of games. And I see something and I'm like, man, that was actually a pretty cool way to use that unit that I didn't really think about. So I'm, I'm hoping to find things like this where people try different strategies that I haven't used and I can perhaps, you know, maybe implement them in my game. But I'm not going to be implementing first first pick night into my game. <laughs> not something I'm going to do. Not yet. It hasn't been proven yet. Not yet. Maybe if we chase Epsilon down and watch well, I think I think he won a final after this. And so maybe we look at that one. And maybe that was a night first draft, too. I don't know. Let's give yeah. Let's give Epsilon a redemption. Absolutely. And show one of his yeah, tournament well, wins. He gives me redemption when I play him. I know that. So Hey, just click the click the stupid like button. Doesn't, it. it doesn't cost anything. Just click it. Click the button and subscribe while you're at it. And also... Go ahead and leave us some comments yeah. about what kind of content you want. Here's what we were thinking. What we were thinking, we can do draft, just like an episode of just draft reviews. Mm -hmm. We just talk about the drafts. Yeah. Don't do the games. Um, we want to do kind of like a podcast. Not a consistent podcast, but just like, just talking about topics, right? Like not necessarily a game review. We can review our own games mm -hmm. that we've played in. Yeah. Review games that we haven't seen. That's what, that's what I'm really exciting about is if people can submit games because, you know, I've Obviously, I remember the games that I played. I know what the mm. games my friends have played. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure there are amazing games out there that, you know, unless I'm scouring every single War Chest replay that's ever happened, I'm never going to know about. Right. So if you guys have a replay from, you know, the last tournament you're in, the last arena game, or even a year ago that you remember being a great game, send it to us. Yeah, and I would love to watch that game. And we'll talk about it just like we did this one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Viewers submitted, uh, like, you know, hey, why did I lose this game? What could I have done differently? Yeah. Great. And then, uh, yeah, and we do live, live, we did a live game, a one, you know, once or, well, twice, I guess I uploaded one. Yeah. Um, maybe someday we can do like a, a live, literally a live game. Yeah. That'd be fun. Oh, I mean, yeah. I With actual that. chips. That'd be, oh. <laughs> yeah. Maybe when the Shadows expansion gets delivered, oh. we can do a live Shadows expansion game. I mean, we still should. For I'm, sure we should. I'm not a huge fan of the Shadows. We'll check it out. Yeah. I haven't even played it. I haven't played a single game of it. Yeah, I just don't like it. Well, you're going to learn to like it when we play it live. Okay. There it I'm going to learn to like first, like first pick night, too. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you later. Thanks, guys.